Uh, my new novel, Between Clay and Dust, which has been shortlisted for the Manation Literary Prize, is about uh, two artists uh, at the end of their careers, and they are trying to cope with the changes that have been brought about by the event of partition. And these uh, events have robbed them of their main patrons, who were uh, the Rajas, Maharajas, uh, Princes of princely states. And after the abolition of the princely states, uh, uh, with, with the partition, uh, these institutions which relied on royal patronage were left to fend for themselves and with, with, you know, with survival becoming difficult, uh, the need for compromise arose and these two artists were given the same, uh, almost a similar kind of choices and they both exercised their options and their, uh, their choices differently from each other. Uh, without without compromising on their dignity, but in the, in the process, uh, they uh, one of them hurt uh, somebody close to him or her, and you know the, the other person uh, did not. So this really was a novel about the kind of choices offered to us and how we can make compromises without compromising our dignity or the principles which we hold dear. There there is no location. There, this is subcontinent. Somewhere in the subcontinent. But uh, whether it's uh, India or you know the newly created Pakistan, that is not defined because essentially I wish to portray a common culture which existed at the time, regardless of you know geographical divisions or you know political divisions or ideological divides. Uh, they are uh, both part of the same story. Uh, these two artists have an interaction because they both respect each other's uh, particular area of excellence. And they do, uh, they do rely on each other for a kind of support, uh, emotional support in that in the difficult time. So it's, it's, a, it's a story about these two um, characters mainly and you know, uh, the, their relationship with those around them. Uh, the evolution uh, in, in characters and in their relationships happened over the years because as, as I went through different drafts and as I thought more about the motivations of different characters, their relationships became more layered, it be, they became more complex. So that happened in the process of writing and rethinking and rewriting. So that, that, did, that did happen. Yes, yes it is uh, a linear story. It develops with, uh, with, with the, you know, both uh, the Palwan and the Tawaif coming, to, uh, trying to come to terms with, their, uh, with, their, with, the new real, with the new realities of their lives and trying to walk, uh, maintain a balance in their, you know, how they react to the changes and how they uh, assert themselves in, which in their own particular uh, domains of uh, uh, power. So this is a story about that and, you know, how their relationships with other, those who are close to them uh, were affected by their choices and the decisions they made. No, so, you know, social comment is uh, embedded in one way or the other in every story. Uh, so in this story, it it describes, you know, how the new changes are affecting people's behavior, you know, towards each other, and is is uh, is the new reality an ugly reality or a more uh, a prettier reality than you know what it was or is it an uglier reality so you know that the book talks about that and it does make that comment yes uh, I tried I tried to make the uh, in, in, in the sense you know what is the hidden device in the story the hidden device in the story was an effort a very conscious effort on my part to make the reader complicit in the crimes or what you know you would like to call crimes of uh, the central character, because throughout his uh, uh, throughout the story he never uh, commits a morally questionable act. So and still he he causes a lot of damage. So the the idea was to you know okay the reader cannot say that this man is doing something wrong. The reader would always say, you know, this person is right, he's right, he's right, till the very end when he has destroyed everything. And then the reader is left, you know, asking himself, what, what happened just now, and, you know, I thought, you know. So this, this kind of makes the reader complicit in, in the actions of the character, and that was, you know, an effort. And uh, I, I, I think I was 
a bit successful in that because some people did mention that in their reviews and, and in the reader interactions I did get the response. Yes, you know that that was a time which was you know uh, which my grandfather perhaps would be able to recall uh, better. But uh, to uh, study about the Pahlwans and their discipline, I had to I had to read a lot about you know the Pahlwans, and I was very lucky to find a book which which gave the entire history of the Pahlwans of the subcontinent. And this this became you know uh, this was my initial uh, base research uh, for this for this particular book. Uh, Initially, I wish to explore uh, just the phenomenon of the Pahlwan or you know what is the essence of the Pahlwan because you know here is this an athlete who throughout his life uh, adheres to a very strict uh, uh, discipline of exercising and a diet and what does it do to you as a human being that was you know the initial uh, uh, thing which I wish to query about. But later as I started reading about the Pahlwans, I began to see the outer world and the relationships, you know, that the human relationships that they had uh, with, with those around them. And it became a story of one of, of one and uh, I mean more than one relationships uh, of, uh, in, that, um, in that situation. Uh, what interested me in this book, because it took me about 10 years to finish this book and throughout the 10 years I was working on it, uh, the idea of redemption and the possibility of redemption even after what when you when you think that all possi possibilities have been lost um, the idea that redemption is still possible to the very end you know uh, it, it is still within your reach that was the idea which interested me in this book